In this video, I'm going to show you how scenes and presets work on Mautrix. Scenes and presets allow you to structure and organize all your MIDI messages into songs, sounds, set lists, or however you like to stay organized. So first off, let's have a look at the scenes. Right now we have no scenes, it's completely empty here, but we can tap the plus and we get a new scene, and we can keep doing that. Uh, as many times as we like. They are all by default named New Scene, um, which is going to be an issue later on if we have a thousand of them. So we can long press, get this context menu up, and we can rename. So let's call this one S1, right? And the other options in my context menu is to move scenes around. I can duplicate them and of course I can delete them. Um, but let's just go right into the scene and have a look. If I'm editing, I'm just going to tap it with my finger. Uh, if I'm performing, I can select the scene with the corresponding foot twist. Inside my preset, I have six slots mapped to these six foot switches. I have a left and a right arrow mapped to these uh, switches on the side, and I have a bit of uh, extra information. First off, we have the scene name again here in the middle. I can long press, and I can also rename it in here if I like. I have the scene number. I have the oops. I have the page number, page one of one. So in a situation where I have many presets, let's just add in a few. Again, plus and. Select preset and preset. Maybe I ran out of space here on this page. I can long press on the right uh, arrow, and now I'm page on page two of two, and I can f add a few more presets in here. Maybe put in a tap tempo, so I can tap in a tempo here, and I can add another page, add a preset here, and I can keep on doing that. Uh, there's no fixed limit to presets or pages or um, scenes for that matter. I can go back, go back. I can add a tip tempo in here as well. So I have two of them. I can add a start stop. So I can stop the MIDI clock and send the uh, transport, uh, the corresponding transport message as well. If I have to control uh, an external sequence or whatever. I can also a long press down here. I can rename the page. I'm just going to call it P1. So page one is P1, page two doesn't have a name, and page three, let's name that uh, yeah, P3 for consistency, like this. Um, so maybe I have a page for all my drive sounds and another page for all my delay sounds. You can structure it uh, how, how it best uh, suits you. Then we have the gear icon, and in here we have the scene settings. And there's not a lot in here, but when we enter the scene, we can choose to send out some MIDI commands. I can click the plus, and let's just say for the fun of it, put a PC in. So when we enter the scene, this PC of value zero is going to be sent on channel one. I can have other messages being sent when I leave the scene. And then I have uh, some settings for activating the scene with uh, incoming MIDI from an external controller. Let's just do a long press here and delete because I don't need this message right now. So now I have a few presets and a few utility functions on the first page. If I do a long press on this tile here, I can rename the preset. Let's call it P1. So know what it is. I can also choose to move it. So all of these flashing blue um, tiles are possible destinations for my move. Um, so I can move it over here, or I can move it. I can also move it down here. There's also the all uh, there's already a preset down here, so they are just going to flip around. Which place? I can uh, duplicate it if I need a copy and I can delete it. So that's that's the uh, the overview of my of my scene. I have my presets inside my scene. 
I have pages with more presets. I have the uh, the MIDI tempo, the, the clock, and I can add in uh, various uh, utility functions as well. So now let's dive into the preset and make it do something useful. So first let's go into P1, I tab it, and now I'm into the preset and I can put MIDI commands and functions uh, in and make it do something useful for me. And similar to, to the scene settings, I can send uh, any number of number of messages when I activate my preset and a number of uh, messages when I deactivate. I can send MIDI uh, in response to expression input for my two expression inputs. I'll get back to that in another video. Um, so I'm going to skip that for now. And then we have some some more preset settings uh, that I'll also get back to later in this video. So let's say first off, when I activate preset P1, I would like to also activate this pedal here, the CXM 1978. And I can do that in a number of ways. I can select a MIDI message and the type of MIDI message I would like to use. Um, just going to show it. Um, say maybe if I need to send something on channel one, controller 70 and value 107, I can put it in like this. Um, but I can't remember what CC messages controls this pedal. So I'm just going to delete this. And instead, I'm going into my device function library. I'm going to select Chase Bliss because that's the manufacturer of this device here. And I'm going to select the actual uh, pedal. And now I have a list of all the, the functions I can control via MIDI. And I would like to control the bypass. So I select bypass. And I would like it to turn on. And if I activate my live mode up here in the corner and select on again, we can see that it turned on in real time. If I select off, it turns off. So now when my preset P1 is being activated, it's going to send whatever media message this is that uh, activates this function. So I don't need to care about CC values and numbers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just need to know that I have a Chase Bliss GXM 1978 and I want to control the bypass. Let's say when I deactivate the preset, I would like the pedal to turn off again. So I'm just going to show once more. Uh, I have my device profile library. I select the manufacturer and the pedal. And then I select the function. And in this case, I want to be off. And it's off. So if we go back out, that was P1 I was editing. I can click the foot switch. Preset turns on. Pedal turns on. Click again, and it turns off. So that's pretty much what I want uh, in this basic example. We see we have an L up here in the corner, and that stands for latching, and that's the behavior we're seeing here. I click the switch, it turns the preset on, and then the next time I click, it turns off again. If I would like something else, a different behavior, I can go in here in the preset settings, and let's have a look at the different uh, activation options we have. First off, I can select a color to uh, to highlight uh, the tile uh, when it's active. Let's just select the light blue. Then I can select the activation mode. As I mentioned, we are now in the uh, latching mode. Let's try momentary. Let's go back out and try it out. So now we have an M for momentary. So now the preset and the pedal is only active as long as I hold the foot reach down. When I let go, it turns off. Let's go back in and see we also have an always on mode. And that simply means that whenever we activate the scene, the preset is going to be uh, turned on and stay on. You can't turn it off. If you'd like to turn it off, we have to go back to the latching and then you can say activate with scene. So that means you enter the scene, the latching preset gets activated, but then you can use the foot switch to deactivate um, later on. Let's uh, leave that as it is right now and then have a quick look at the activation group. So activation groups um, allows you to have multiple presets inside the same scene 
interact with each other. Um, so first, let's just create a new group here, AG1 for activation group one, and let's leave the default settings as they are, and then let's go up to this other preset. First, let me rename this to AS for aftershock. That's what I'm going to control here. Again, device function, find the device I would like to control, source audio aftershock. And this pedal has a lot of uh, MIDI controllable fe uh, features. So they are divided into these sections here for the left channel, the right channel, for the parametric EQ, so on. Um, but I'm still just going to use the on off function for this demonstration. Select on when I activate. I'm in live mode, so the pedal is already on. And then I'm going to show a quick shortcut because in deactivate, I'm going to do the same, but uh, with the value being off. So I'll do a long press here and I say copy. And I go into deactivate and now have this uh, clipboard icon. I can click that and that means paste. So now I have the same message in uh, on activate and on deactivate. And in on deactivate, of course, I want it to be off. And the pedal is off. Um, so now I have a preset that controls the aftershock and another preset that controls the CXM. But let's put this preset into the same activation group, AG1, and let's keep also here the default settings. So now they are both in the same group, and the default settings simply mean that only one preset in the group can be active at a time. Now P1 is active, I activate AS, and P1 deactivated. So they switch around like this. I can also change the settings. So when I activate P1, I'm going to activate all presets in this activation group. So that means I activate P1 and AS turns on as well. I can still deactivate that up here and deactivate P1 down here, but they turn on together. Also have options for when I deactivate, whether the other presets in the group should keep their new state, uh, whether that's on or off or whatever it is, or they should revert to the old state. So for instance, if we set this to solo and revert, that means when I activate P1, it's going to be the only active preset in the group. And when I deactivate again, the other uh, presets and that means uh, the aftershock in this case is going to revert to whatever it was doing before. So now it's off. I activate. It's the only one active. That's fine. I deactivate. No change. If this is active and I activate this, it's the only one active. I deactivate and this one goes back to active. And I can still turn that off up here. So that's the activation groups. They're very powerful and flexible. Um, and you can combine activation groups. A single preset can be a member of several groups. Um, so we have a lot of flexibility in, in activating and controlling presets. Now, finally, let's go into the settings again. And down here, we have the long press uh, settings. They are disabled by default, but we can enable them. And then we get a notice that if we have long press enabled, we're going to have a slight delay in the response of a, a press on the foot switch. And that's because if you have a long press, the system is going to have to time uh, the duration of your press and see is it long enough to be a long press or is it not and therefore a regular press. The default on Mortrix is that presses are uh, short presses and therefore they activate instantly. There's no delay by default. But if you need a long press, we're going to have a, a, a short delay so we can time uh, the duration of your press. Having it enabled, we get a new fold out down here where we can add whatever messages we would like. That can be device functions or media messages or all some of the other stuff. Um, let's just put this PC in for now. We go back out. And now we see the uh, indication up here is L plus, And the plus simply means that we have 
uh, the long press uh, activated. So now if I do a long press, we get this white flash, and that means that the long press messages have been uh, triggered. Also works in the active state, of course. Um, so if you need that feature, you can turn it on, and uh, it will work as, as you are expecting. So that's it for how scenes and presets work on Mortrix. In another video, I'm going to show you how you can set up an expression pedal to send MIDI commands. And in future videos, I'm going to show how you can enable even more features in presets and work with the built-in sequences, uh, have LFOs running, and uh, envelopes as well. So stay tuned for that.